just say, for example, different techniques. Okay. We've got the trace down paper method, which is, I'm coming in, this here. Now, trace down paper, this is one by Frisk. There's so many varieties on the market as well. So have a look around for graphite transfer paper when you do that. So this is a quick way to get the image onto the paper. So if I just open that up a little bit, this is very slippy, this, so, so be careful. It's also quite thin as well. Hello, Anne-Marie. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Sue. So when you look at, I've cut one of the sheets in half there, for example, so I'll just take that piece out. The benefit through using something like this, let's have a quick look. Uh, I'm making sure you can see me on the camera there, okay? Yep, yeah, that's working all right. Okay, so the benefit through this is that that will go onto your watercolor paper. Imagine that's your watercolor paper. Okay, I would tack it, tack it down with a couple of pieces of um, masking tape. This will then slide underneath the shiny side down, bear in mind, and then, once that's underneath, you can trace along the top of this to reveal the image underneath. Now, that's the quickest way of getting the outline on the paper. I know there's a lot of people that don't like that method. There's a lot of people that prefer the method. There are people which, looking at our comments on here the other day, I found that there's 50-50 with it. Some people use it. Some people use both freehand and transfer. Some people get a photograph, put a um, pencil on the back of that, put it down, and trace through that way to get the image onto the paper. That's another way, if you want to trace it on. But the best way, really, to get the image on the paper is by freehand. Now, I don't always do freehand because I'm looking at doing the videos for Patreon, which I'm sure you all know down the corner there, the ones I tend to do. And because I'm doing the videos for Patreon, they take about two weeks to produce each one, all in all, all the way through. So if I do everything freehand, obviously the problem with that is that it could take me forever. So, to get the image on the paper, just the outline on the paper, or the basic details, I use trace down paper. However, the other method, if we can just find the image for you, one second, is the grid system. Now, the grid system, the way it works, is that you will get a acetate grid, which you can buy from the from the uh, shops, and you know, the art shops, that kind of thing. I'll put it that way around a minute doesn't seem to sit flat at the moment. This is one I made myself, which I printed on some acetate. You can buy inkjet printer acetate. Now, I'll tell you what I might do, you know, at some point. I might, because I created this, as I say, I might put the document on here for you to download at some point, or put it on my website somewhere for you to download. Remind me to do that, okay, if you don't mind. So the idea with this, let's put it that way so it stays flat, is that you would draw a corresponding grid on the other side of the paper, okay, exactly the same size grid, or you can even go bigger if you want. You can go a bigger grid. So you can go, you know, twice as big or even smaller. Your choice. And all you simply do, if you've got a grid, from something like that, for example. Hang on. I've got my palette in the way. I'll just move that palette out of the way a minute. So just bear with me a moment. Which I can just do. There you go. That's better. So imagine you've got a grid down the side there. Oh, hello, Scully. How are you? Hello, we're getting more snow. Ugh, five to seven inches. Oh no, I do feel sorry for you. You must be probably used to it over there by now, I would have thought, but even so. Hello, Mal. <laughs> so let's say, for example, this is grid number two. I know this is all upside down because I want it to stay flat on the paper. What I would normally do, you divide that grid by five. Imagine that's ten points in there. Okay, halfway is five. Halfway between that, halfway between that. So if you divide that into five sections, so, let me think, hang on. One, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. So that's five points up. And you can do exactly the same across as well. Do five points across if you want to, all the way around, up to ten points. Now the idea is imagine this is divided into five. Halfway's about there. Okay? But this is just below halfway. That's probably about on a number four, isn't it? So about there. So that's where that little area there starts. But imagine this is divided into ten. Okay, all the way across. Done around did that. Looking at the position for that one, that's probably about a seven. So about there. So that goes to about there. There's your seven there. Five, six, seven. Got the idea? And then that will then come down to <laughs> probably a f just below four, so three and a half, probably about there. So that comes down to there. So that's that section already drawn in. Then what you can do, this comes down to about a three. You've got another one which comes down to three. So that's that section already drawn in. 
So when you work on this all the way around, you can actually work out all the way around from all the grids how to kind of draw it out just by using the grid system. That's the beauty about using the grid system is that you can do it this way. You can enlarge it, you can make it smaller. Whatever you want to do is really, really useful to do that, okay? So that's the grid system. And as I say, if I go across, let's have a look at the next bit. So that's probably just, well, five is about in the middle, isn't it? So that'd be five and a half, roughly. So five is the middle, five and a half is there. So what we're looking at for that one is just a little one in between. So that comes down slightly lower than this one. This is an eagle owl, by the way, which I've got my finger right in the middle of its eye. <laughs> Sorry, eagle owl, I do apologise. Then that comes down to about two. So one, two. So about there. And that's another section of the... the well, it's the ear, really, isn't it? No, no, it's not really an ear, is it? It's like tufts. <laughs> Okay, so then you've got another one which comes out all the way to probably four. So one, two, three, four, to there. Okay, this is quite a complicated one I'm working on here on purpose. And then that one comes to four, comes all the way back down again to about there. So then you've got another section. My pencil's running out, I do apologise. This is a mechanical pencil, by the way, which I prefer to use. And then what else have we got? So we've got another one coming out to about there. That goes to about two and a half. Comes down to about two. <laughs> so two and a half there, see what I mean? To that point there. And then two, one, two, to there. Okay, so far so good. And that's basically how you work it all the way around. So once you've got all these in the top, then you come along to this section here. So imagine this is divided in five again. So you go one, two, three, four, five. So that's roughly about number three across where this section is here. So you go one, two, three, four, five. There you go, about there. Okay, got it so far. So extend the grid down, let's put another one in there. And then you can come down again and work it all the way along, all the way around the um, the little owl. Okay, so I'll give you some ideas of what the grid system is and how that works. So remind me to do that if you don't mind. If I don't put it on here or link to it, say, Paul, do it tonight, do it tonight when you start watching the television. Okay, so then I'll, uh, I'll try and remember to upload it and share that with my little acetate grid system with you. So the after take you can buy off the internet or in kind of printing shops or stationery shops for a reasonable price. It's not the cheapest of stuff, but um, it's quite handy. In fact, the printer one, the inkjet printer one, has got a bit of a rough side on one side. The other side's smooth. Obviously, the printable side is a rough side, which should take hold of the ink that you put in there. Right, okay. So that is using the grid system. I've told you about the um, using transfer paper. Now freehand, are you ready for this? Okay. Hello, Aaron. <laughs> That's my son, by the way, if anybody wants to know. Magnus, hello there. Hello from Iceland. Nice to kind of know you're online. Hi there. This is a surprise visit, by the way, everybody. I wasn't planning on coming online this afternoon. I've not scheduled any any uh, live events or anything like that. I just thought, well, what the heck, we'll just go live for a change. Now then, freehand, are you ready for this? Freehand drawing is one thing I tend to do, I prefer to do, if I'm not working on a commission or a video for Patreon. So if I'm not doing a Patreon video, this is what I do. Let's work from the eye. I always like to start from the eye first of all, okay? So what we've been on for, so 10 minutes, so mm, give it another 10 minutes or so. And what I tend to do, I think about the size of the eye. Now you can either use the size that's already here, and the way you would do that, before I start drawing the actual the angle, use your thumbnail, okay? So I've got my thumbnail there and the tip of the pencil and measure from one side of the eye to the other. Okay, so a little bit further, just to there. I'll just pop that one in. I shall pull that, I'll pull it about there actually. So that's to there and I think my other mark was about there. So just put that down, so one there and get my pencil to work and just see it. And it was there. Okay. So that's the actual width for the eye that's already there. Now you've got to think about, well, okay, so now we know the width of the eye. How do we work out the height of the eye? Same kind of thing. So my pencil's running out my head. <laughs> Same kind of idea. I'm going to just switch my pencil a minute. One second. I've got quite a few of these. Ta-da! Okay. Right. It's a white one. Makes a change. So same idea again. So now we know the width of the eye. How do we know how tall it is? We know this is going to be the top of the eye coming over to here, all right? So we know that comes to there, and it's a bit of a slight angle on there as well. 
Hello Marie. <laughs> Flat owls are one of my favourite birds to see. You paint, there's so much depth in the eyes. There is in the eyes on, on birds, especially on this uh, particular eagle owl as well. Looking at the heights, now the one I would do, I'll just turn this around briefly. You've got to try and keep it level all the time, by the way, when you're measuring. Keep it exactly level with the drawing that you're doing. So if I take a measurement with my thumbnail to the bottom of the eye, you see what I'm doing there? Now I'm going to hold that where it is. Don't move it. Don't move it. Okay. Now how far from the edge of this eye, think about my thumbnail, does it go across? So probably about two thirds of the way across the eye. So, okay, that's the thumbnail go. So that's the full width. That's two thirds, roughly there. So that's going to go. I'm going to stretch around. Hang on. I'll put my arm around. So that's now the bottom of the eye here. Got the idea? Got, oh, no pun intended, okay? <laughs> so then you've got to think about the curve. Get a nice swing going, first of all. Okay? Get it swinging. And then very lightly get the pencil, to let the pencil touch the paper. Just like so. And the same will apply to here as well. Get it swinging first. Get the feel of the shape that you want there, first of all. Then let it touch the paper to get that nice curve that you need for the outline shape of the eye. So already we've got an eye. Yay! Okay. Now, we've got to think about the centre of the eye. is going to be about here, as you can see, for the top part of the line. And the pupil. Now, how big is the pupil? Let's have a look. Okay, we'll do the same thing again. I hope you're all following this. Please say something. Let me know if you can see what I'm doing. Cause it, and can you hear me all right? <laughs> I hope so. Oops, sorry, just not the camera. So I'm going to measure the width of the pupil now using my thumbnail and the tip of the pencil. Now, if I've not had a manicure, I do apologise. Now, the inside, just the edge of the eye here. Oh, that's quite handy, though. From the edge of the eye here, thumbnail, remember? Tip of the pencil is actually to the middle of the eye. So the middle of the eye is there. That distance there is actually the width of the pupil. So it's about, let's just double check a little bit more about there. Yeah. So that's the width of the pupil. So now we've got the width of the pupil. Yay. Okay. So this is how you can do this. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Very kind of you. Oh, sorry. Do, do we keep knocking that camera stand? I do apologize. So now you've got the side of the eye which is going to be the same distance as that, okay? And then you can very, very lightly, very lightly, barely touching the paper, sketch in the curvature of the eye, just to the pupil. Now, obviously, that's going to extend underneath all them feathers there on the eyelid. So that's the curvature of the eye already there. So already we've got the structure of the eye. So that's how you would start to work out where things go. Now, the next bit I want to work out is how far across here does this dark area go? Remember, you've got to have it nice and level. Remember that. Sometimes what you might want to do... Where's my tape gone? Right. Aaron James Hopkinson, my son on there. Have you stolen my... No, you haven't. <laughs> Who it is? Hello, Mal. Oh, oh, hang on. Hi, Lee Allen. Ah. Oh, you've already said hello to me. I'll let you off with that one, then. Right, hang on. I'm going to lightly take this down so it doesn't move now. Stay. Okay, here we go. So we've got the pupil in, we've got the main shape of the eye in. How far across does this go? Let's measure it. Thumbnail, tip of the pencil. Okay. So that is that. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's nearly there. So from the outside part of the eye here, that goes just past the pupil. So we'll do the same again. Look. So the outside of the eye, get my nail in position. Just about there. As it just past the pupil. So that distance there. You put a light mark if you're not sure to begin with. Oh, that was spot on, actually. Oh, that was lucky. So now we know this mark here is where this line goes to. Yeah, there you go. So that's how it all works. That's how it all pans together, just by drawing out. So as I mentioned on here the other day, just for the typing side of things, is that when you're drawing, freehand drawing is a really good one to practice um, because it does help kind of hone your skills in a little bit, helps you see things clearer, and helps you see the shapes. Um, prior to doing a painting. So if you're doing a freehand drawing, first of all, just for a bit of a play, I wouldn't do this straight onto the watercolour paper though. I would normally do this on some scrap. This is just printing paper, that's all it is. Do it on printing paper first. Then you can use the trace down paper to trace your drawing onto the watercolour paper. Got the idea? So if you want to do it that way around, it could take you a lot longer, of course it will, 
but it will help hone your skills in on how to see how to see the shapes and the sizes and the relations of things within there. So there you go, that will give you some ideas on how to work with that. So once you've got the basic outline, and I've obviously done a lot darker than you need to, then you can start to fine tune that then and really pick out the details because also you've got a double eyelid down there, you've got another line down here. Then we can really start to think about the shapes just for the eye itself. See, obviously now we know where the black line goes there, we can then think about from the edge of the eye to, to the top of the beak. Think about that level line, okay, every time you do this. Hello, Mal, and yourself, just logged on. <laughs> you two having a good old chat there, Liz. Liz. <laughs> ah, dear, what you two like. So that's the top of the beak. Ah, oh, dear. Okay, now that equates to, let's just go from the edge of the eye again. Oh, there you go. Right, so the edge of the eye to the right-hand side of the pupil, that distance there, is the distance to here. So that's that one there. Got the idea? Yes, I know. That's another pun intended, that's it. And keep that level. And you know the top of the beak is just below the level line for the middle of the eye. So, keep the pencil level. And you know that it's going to be down to about here, the top of the beak. Where is it on there? Let's have another look. Yeah, so that's kind of in line with that section there for the top of the beak. Now, I know it's a lot of measuring, a lot of working out, but believe you me, once you practice this and you get the hang of doing it, you whiz around it, you really do. It doesn't take that long to kind of get the basic outline and the basic shapes first. I'd say once you've got the basic shapes on there, then, and after then, you can start adding in the finer details and really picking out where things go. So then you can really fine-tune things. I'm only using the one lead I know at the moment. If you're doing a, a graphite drawing or pencil drawing, whatever you want to call it, you would normally start off with, or I would start off anyway, the way I personally do it, with a 2H pencil. Okay, so it's a fairly hard pencil, but you don't press on with it. Just gives you those reference marks like I'm doing now to work from. Then you gradually increase the uh, the leads that you use from a 2H to a, a HB to a 2B, 4B, then probably even a 6B. And then go as dark if you want to as, as an 8B, so which is very soft leaded. Very difficult to get a sharp line on there as well. So, okay, happy with that? Say yes, Paul. <laughs> all right. So, again, that will give you some ideas all about freehand drawing, the grid system, and tracing out. Okay, let's just put that down a little bit for you a minute. I've not gone anywhere. Don't worry, I'm back again. And we'll carry on with a little bit of painting and a general chat. Just for another couple of minutes. Now, if you have any questions, as I say, remember to pop them down the, down the bottom. I'd like to hear from you because... Um, Anything about drawing or anything, well, anything really, with, as long as it's art related, of course. I don't mind. I don't buy it. Well, not today anyway. Just let me know. And I'll do my best to answer. Now, I'll be going live on YouTube tomorrow as well, if anybody's interested. Um, the time will be of a similar time to this. And what I'll do before I go live on YouTube, I'll post a YouTube link on here. Okay, I'll try and remember to do that, see if I can do that for you. If not, if anybody's online, will you please post it on here for me? <laughs> so, uh, unless I've forgotten or something like that, I don't know. Okay. So, I'll tell you what I want to do with this as well. I just want to darken some of the areas. Oh, I know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of watercolour white in there as well. So, I'll bring my camera back in. There it is. Hello. Now my mixing palette, as you can see on here, I'll just bring it into full screen for you so you can just see what I'm looking at. This is my main mixing palette, which is a ceramic palette. And all it simply is, <laughs> we got about Liz. All it simply is, is as I say, a nice ceramic palette. There you go. Which is lovely to work with. I prefer ceramic over plastic palettes because the water always tends to lie nice and flat in there. Not like a big bubble of water colour, you know, which it tends to otherwise. Now I'm going to pick some of that white up, and I think I'll add that just into the wings. So I want to spruce it up a little bit, just give it a bit more of a sparkle. So let's bring that one up, okay? So looking at the white now, I want it fairly thick. I'll just go back to the main scene for you. So I want the white to be fairly thick, just to there. And start thinking about where some of these highlights go. Just on the top here. 
and a few more to the white not everybody uses white that's another thing as well which um, I tend to use a lot of is white and black or black and white whichever way around you want to call it and that's because you tend to find um, a lot of people prefer to use the white of the paper and just kind of reserve that white of the paper so they don't paint on it but it depends on the kind of painting style that you use it depends if you like using um, detail work because I'm doing quite fine detail with a lot of my work not so much this one but so especially the Patreon ones which I do for the Patreon videos which is just down there okay then you find that so with those videos I do go into a lot of detail for people to learn as well so if you fancy learning watercolors let me know or just go to patreon.com forward slash the Devon artist and you'll see my work on there oh by the way don't forget as well everybody if you are interested there are um, free items on there you don't have to sign up, you don't have to part with your email address or anything like that. They're just simply items which is um we've got a complete free video tutorial on how to paint a robin. Yeah, completely free, no holds barred. I've even put the outline drawing on there and the reference photo. So you can use those to your heart's content and you can play it as much as you want to as well. Stop, rewind, fast forward, whatever you want to do. So again you go to patreon.com forward slash devon artist and have a look for the free content um section on the left hand side of the screen just scroll down that little bit but stay here first all right you can we'll go you can go there in a bit just don't go just yet okay well i think what i might do as well actually because i'm just looking down here i think there's a few little highlights down here as well just the lightest of touches two airs in air little busby okay and there we go right i think i've been on long enough that's 25 minutes and uh, I think other than that, that will be it for today. So I'll carry on again tomorrow, probably the same paint. I don't know yet, I've not decided yet. Might be one I'm currently working on at the moment as well. I've got three projects on the go at the moment. I tend to. <laughs> kind of keeps you busy, keeps you occupied, and you keep changing the palette as well. So I've got numerous palettes on the go, <laughs> as you can imagine. Right, okay. So, oh, what's that? Yep, stay in port. Yeah, okay, thank you, Liz. <laughs> As I say, if you've got anything you want to ask, please let me know. And I'll do my best to answer. Even if you're watching this afterwards, because this won't be live obviously later on, even though it can look like it's live, you can still put a question on, and I will still see that question when I go on the computer. And um, I'll still do my best to answer. I'm sure you all realise that I do try and answer to every comment I can. The ones that I tend to spot, I do go through it like with a fine tooth comb to make sure that I don't miss anybody's comments. But... I do, one or two do get kind of get through, especially with the Facebook, um, the way Facebook works, so, okay, right, right everybody, I'll talk to you all again very soon, and uh, don't forget, keep in touch, put a comment below, um, if you don't mind sharing this video, that'd be great, because the more people that share my videos, the more I can do the painting for you, okay, just a little bit of a chit chat with you, so the more shares I get, the more I can paint, and um, I'll be back again. Alright, so until next time around, I'll see you again very soon.